Imagine swallowing a pill filled with tiny robots made from frog cells. Sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? Well, buckle up, science enthusiasts, because this mind-bending technology is becoming a reality. Get ready to dive into the wild world of xenobots. Hey there, my curious quirks and inquisitive isotopes. Theodore here, ready to blow your minds with another episode of our Clinical Practice Update series. Today, we're swimming in the microscopic world of xenobots, tiny bio-robots that could revolutionize medicine as we know it. We've got two brilliant minds joining us to unravel this cellular sorcery. So let's shrink down and dive into the bloodstream of the future. Okay, so today we're um, we're going deep on xenobots. Xenobots. These microscopic robots, and I'm using that term loosely for now, built from frog cells. Yeah. Frog cells robots. I know, it's like something out of like a crazy science fiction movie. It really is kind of blowing the doors off, uh, you know, what we think is possible. I mean, it's pushing the boundaries. Totally. Scientists are taking stem cells from frog embryos, and instead of just, you know, letting them develop naturally, they're using AI to kind of guide these cells into forming completely new uh, structures, new forms. So we're talking about programming living organisms. Yeah. It's like this fusion of biology and technology. Yeah. It just seems so futuristic, but it's happening right now. It's happening in labs. Like, we're this is not science fiction. Exactly. This is happening. And, and what's so fascinating is that, you know, when we think about robots, we think of metal and circuits and gears and things like that. But with xenobots, we're talking about actual living cells that are being programmed to act like machines. It's almost like we're like taking a page out of nature's playbook, mm -hmm. but then like adding this whole other layer of technological control on top of it. It's, right? it's almost like biological origami in a sense. You're taking this raw material, these cells, and you're folding them and shaping them. Um, into these functional units. So how does that even work? I mean, are we talking about like tiny scalpels and tweezers manipulating these cells under a microscope? No, it's it's even wilder than that. So researchers are using computer simulations, almost like a video game, to design these xenobots. So they can actually determine the xenobot's shape, its size, how it moves, all within this digital space before they even create it with, um, you know, in a biological lab. It's like they're playing Sims, but with like microscopic frog cells. Basically, it's kind of like that. And once they have that design, that blueprint, they can then use techniques like microsurgery or even lasers to actually coax the stem cells to grow into those specific shapes. Okay, hold up a second. Let me get this straight. We're basically talking about reprogramming frog cells to become tiny living robots. It's like we're playing God with amphibians. But seriously, imagine these little guys swimming around in your body like a microscopic construction crew, rebuilding damaged tissue, or delivering medicine exactly where it's needed. It's both incredibly cool and slightly terrifying when you think about it. It's incredible. Have you seen the videos of these xenobots moving? They're like scooting around, some of them are swimming, some of them are like almost walking. It's mind blowing. Yeah, it's I mean, it is. You're watching these microscopic blobs, almost like little grains of sand moving with a sense of purpose. And it's it's really remarkable because it really does challenge our traditional understanding of what a robot is. Exactly. So are they robots? Are they organisms? Like, where do we even draw the line? Right. And I mean, that that's the question, isn't it? Because they have a lifespan. They can move on their own. They even replicate. Hold on. Back up. Replicate. Yeah. They can replicate. Yeah. Like make copies of themselves. So these xenobots can actually make copies of themselves? That's wild. It's like we've created microscopic living 3D printers. On one hand, it's amazing for producing more of these helpful little robots. But on the other hand, it sounds like the start of every sci-fi movie where things go horribly wrong. I guess the key is making sure they only replicate when and where we want them to. Otherwise, we might end up with a sorcerer's apprentice situation. But instead of magical brooms, it's frog cell robots running amok. They can. It's not exactly like the way that, you know, we think of animals replicating or cells dividing. It's what's called kinetic replication. Kinetic replication. <laughs> okay, now you're just using big words to make me feel like I like don't actually understand what's going on. No, it's it's fascinating. So think of it this way. 
Imagine you have a bowl of Legos, right? And the Xenobot, because of its shape, can bump up against those loose Legos, those stem cells, and essentially assemble them into copies of itself. Oh, wow. It's like they're building themselves just by moving around and interacting with their environment, and that's that's what makes this kinetic replication so different and so fascinating. It's like they're like self-assembling robots. In a way, yeah. And and that's why it's so hard to define what they are. Right. Because they have characteristics of both. Let me break this down a bit. We're essentially at the crossroads of biology and robotics here. These xenobots are blurring the lines between what's alive and what's a machine. It's like we're creating a whole new category of, well, something. This could completely change how we think about medicine, technology, and even life itself. But it also raises a ton of questions about ethics and safety. I mean, who's responsible if a xenobot goes rogue? Do they have rights? Man, the future is weird. So we've got these, these incredible creations that are blurring the lines between what is alive, what is a machine, what can replicate. Yeah. I mean, the possibilities are kind of endless here. Right. What can we actually do with these things? Well, that's what makes it so exciting, right? So where do we even start with Xenobots? What can we actually do with these things? Well, one of the most, I think, immediately exciting areas is in medicine. Medicine? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's the potential for them to completely revolutionize how we treat diseases, how we heal the body. Okay, now you speak in my language. Let's talk about that. Yeah. What kind of medical marvels are we talking about here? Okay, imagine this. Yeah. Microscopic surgeons. What? Smaller than the width of a human hair. Get out. Navigating your bloodstream. Yo. That's, that's the kind of precision we're talking about with xenobots. Okay, hold on. You're saying something smaller than a human hair could be performing surgery inside my body. How is that even possible? So it comes down to how we program them. And it comes down to, you know, the unique properties of these frog cells. So xenobots could theoretically be designed to target very specific areas in the body, say like a blocked artery. Oh, wow. And they could deliver medication um, with pinpoint accuracy. Instead of like, a you know, a pill or an injection that affects your whole system, you're saying this would just go straight to the problem. Exactly. No more systemic treatments, just targeted therapy right where it's needed most. Okay. So we're talking about like hyper-targeted drug delivery. Yeah. That's huge. I mean, especially for like complex conditions like cancer, Alzheimer's, where minimizing side effects is so important. Exactly. And because they're biocompatible, right, they're made from living cells, the hope is that they'll be much less likely to cause, um, you know, adverse reactions from the immune system compared to some synthetic materials. That makes sense. So we've tackled blocked arteries. We're talking about hyper-targeted drug delivery. Mm -hmm. What about just like healing in general? Like, could these things help us recover from injuries faster? So that's where things get really, really interesting. I'm talking about um, regenerative medicine. Regenerative medicine. The potential for xenobots to help repair damaged tissues, potentially even organs. Imagine, right? They could carry stem cells to an injury site. Oh, wow. Promote healing and regeneration. In a way that we can't do now. Yeah, potentially in a way that we haven't even thought of yet. And, and that has, I think, huge implications for, you know, everything from from healing from traumatic injuries to to treating degenerative diseases. So like we're talking about potentially regrowing damaged organs, reversing the effects of aging. Totally, yeah. It's like we're on the verge of like a whole new era of of medicine here. And that's what makes this so exciting. We're not talking about replacing traditional medicine. Right. But we're talking about expanding the toolbox in a way that we've never been able to before. So it's like this whole other set of tools that we can use to keep our bodies healthy and to heal them when they're not. Exactly. It's mind blowing to think about all of this. These like microscopic robots could like revolutionize medicine. But with any new technology, especially something this groundbreaking, mm -hmm. I imagine there have to be some challenges, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've been talking a lot about the potential benefits, all the amazing things Xenobots could do. But the reality is, um, you know, actually bringing this kind of technology into the world, it's complicated. There are definitely hurdles to overcome. So what are some of those hurdles? What are the things that researchers are really grappling with when it comes to Xenobots? Well, one of the biggest challenges, and this is true for a lot of biological systems, is control. I mean, these aren't like you know, machines in the traditional sense. We can program them, we can design them, but they're still living cells, right? right? And that means they can be unpredictable. 
It's like we can give them instructions, but we can't control every single thing they do. Right? Exactly. And and that's part of what makes it so challenging, because if we're talking about using these xenobots inside the human body, we need to be able to ensure that they behave exactly as intended. And that's not always easy with a biological system. Yeah, it's like the difference between programming a computer and, I don't know, directing a flock of birds or yeah. something, right? You can try to steer them in the right direction, but you can't control every single movement. Perfect analogy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because we're dealing with living cells, there's always the possibility of unintended consequences. Like, what happens if the xenobots trigger an immune response? Or what if they start interacting with our own cells in ways that we didn't anticipate? So there's a lot more research that needs to be done before we start seeing xenobots swimming around in our bloodstreams. What's the outlook? I mean, when can we realistically expect to see this technology actually being used to treat people? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And unfortunately, there's no easy answer. Um, you know, research is moving quickly, but right now, xenobots are still primarily in the research and development phase. Scientists are working on things like improving their lifespan, because right now, they don't live very long. They're trying to enhance their ability to perform specific tasks. And of course, they're laser focused on ensuring that they're safe for use in living organisms. So it's not a matter of if, it's when. Exactly. And, and that's what makes this such an exciting field to watch, because we really are witnessing like the very early stages of what could be a revolution in healthcare. I don't think people realize how quickly this field is moving. I mean, it was just a few years ago that xenobots were like this crazy idea. Mm. And now we're talking about using them to treat diseases. And who knows what other applications we might discover, right? I mean, the possibilities really are kind of endless when you think about it. It's incredible. Well, I want to thank you so much for, for coming on the show today and, and walking us through all of this. I feel like my mind is like completely blown wide open. It's been my pleasure. This is this is why I love this stuff. You know, it's just it's so full of potential and it's so exciting to think about what the future holds. Absolutely. And I think that's a great place to leave it on this note of potential and excitement, because the future of medicine really is being written right now. And as we've learned today, it might be a lot stranger and more incredible than we ever could have imagined. So thank you to all of our listeners for joining us on this deep dive into the world of Xenobots. We'll see you next time. And there you have it, my scientifically savvy semicolons. We've taken a deep dive into the microscopic world of xenobots, and I don't know about you, but my mind is thoroughly boggled. As we wrap up, I can't help but wonder, are we on the brink of a medical revolution, or are we opening Pandora's Petri dish? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, the future of medicine is looking pretty frogtastic. Keep questioning, keep exploring, and remember, in the world of science, Today's fiction is tomorrow's textbook. Catch you on the flip side, future frogbot overlords. Mm -hmm.